As C++ developers, we love performance. Today I'll show a technique that can take the performance of your code to the next level. Copy on write. Copy on write is win-win. It will save you CPU load and it will save you memory. C++ allows us to write code that is only doing work if really necessary. Oftentimes in our code, we don't know whether copy is necessary. It might be that the object remains completely unchanged over its lifetime, and then we would waste resources on copying it. We start off by basing our implementation of the copy on write pointer on the shared pointer. The shared pointer is the smart pointer of the standard library, and it knows how many objects it is referring to or how many um, pointers to a specific object exist. And this is the, the, the basis of our, of our implementation. So when we construct the copy on write pointer, we um, construct the short, uh, shared pointer of the type T. That's why we have here a template, which means that we can use later this um, implementation for any type that we want to wrap in this copy on write pointer. Now we need to route through the operators, the operator of the star and the operator of the arrow to access the underlying shard, uh, shared pointer. So we use here the content dot operator and here also the star of the content. And this basically routes through the access to the share pointer. The cool thing in C++ is that we can overload these operators based on the type of object they are being called on. So we can basically copy this operator and use a different operator for a call with a const object. And we do that by adding const at the beginning so that our return type is const and const at the end so the object that we can call this function on has to be const. And by this we can distinguish between objects which are const in the context or which could potentially be modified by a non-const reference. So we do this for the one operator and then we do it for uh, the other operator as well. And add here a const implementation for a const object. As of now, both implementations are the same. But let's now introduce the secret ingredient to make this cow pointer work, the copy on write. So basically, every time we access the object through one of the non-const operators, we want to create a copy of the object. So we introduce inside of this operator a function which we call detach, which basically means that at this point we want to actually copy the object. Then we use the detach in the first non-const version and we use the detach in the second non-const version. And obviously we also need to implement the detach, which we do as a private member function. Here we say we want to implement detach. And here we use the uh, smart pointer or the shared pointer uh, implementation. And the implementation for that is basically this. So we get from the content, we get the pointer, the raw pointer, which is there. And we see whether this is unique. And if it is actually unique, then we don't do something. But it, if there are several references to the same object, then we create an additional copy of the object which we create by invoking the operator new of the templated type T of the object that we want to copy. And this is all the magic there is. So this is basically already um, a valid copy on write pointer implementation. Um, shortly walk through it again. We have the operators, we have the const of overload of the operator, and in the non-const overload of the operators, we call the detach function. And the detach function is tracking how many objects there are. And if there are more than one object, so if it's not unique, then we will create an additional copy. Let's see how this plays out in implementation. So for instance, we create here a copy on write string and we name this, uh, give it the content test. And then we um, have a look at the content of the string and we have a look at the address of the underlying strings object. Then we copy this object or we create a copy of this object. Because it's a lazy copy, we don't really copy it. We just create an additional reference to the same underlying object. And this we can see by accessing the address of the underlying object. So here we see we take the smart pointer. And by the way, this is actually the reason why I made this here public. 
Um, otherwise, we should probably put it into the private part of the implementation. And here we access the address of the underlying object's content. After that, we modify um, the copy on write pointer or the content of the copy on write pointer. And then we go through the same outputs again. We display the content of the, uh, of the first object, the address of the underlying content of the second object, and also the address of the underlying of the second object. So let's go to the console and build the code. Um, hopefully everything compiles and it actually does. And then we run it and let's have a look at the output. So the underlying string is test and also of the second is also test. And we see that they both share the same address. And this is the important part. So at this point in time, the copy on write string and the copy on write string two, they both have the same underlying object, which means that no copy was created. We only created a new reference to the same object. Appendix, we uh, appended the word text to the string, which we see here. The, so the copy on write string two has now also the test text. And we see that apparently the underlying did change between the two copy on write pointers, which means that the first one now actually has a different underlying than the second one. And this is exactly what we wanted. So we wanted that the address is different um, than uh, than before because we wanted that the object actually has been copied in the moment where we accessed it with the non-const operator. Even though this is a super useful technique and also the implementation is general because it's a templated type, we need to be careful where we actually use it because it can be that the underlying has um, operators or has member functions which return a reference to some part of the underlying object. So for instance, for string, uh, one thing that can be done is we access here um, of the underlying string, we access, for instance, the fourth character of it, and we create here a reference. So we say it's a char reference uh, for a specific character. And now we have here a char reference to whatever is at the fourth position of this copy on write string. And this reference now, is a little bit tricky because the reference uh, is referencing some internal state of the object and um, this can go down the drain as soon as a copy of this object is being done and the reference is internally copied. So in a real implementation, usually it makes sense that you provide the copy on write for a specific class. Um, since then you can take the necessary countermeasures and you exactly know if there are some reference returning um, object member functions which might screw you up. Um, so in this case I would avoid having this general implementation but nonetheless the concept is super interesting and uh, it might be super useful. That's all that I have for you today. I hope you were able to speed up your code a little bit by using copy on write and if you enjoy watching these kind of videos I think you will also enjoy watching this one. It shows another technique which is super useful and underrated and which you definitely should know about. As always, thank you for watching and enjoy coding.